bless up the listeners. Yeah, bless up to all the listeners. All the people all over the world. Um, yes, Thinks Man was a song that um, was written to reflect what was happening in the late 70s. Um, you know, when the youth, them, when all of us, you know, there was a, a craze called Sticks, man, where we, it's a pickpocketing kind of thing, which was a negativity. So, Tony and myself, Russell, right, which I, I played drums, guitar, P, um, bass, and sing on Sticks, man. We made it for uh, um, a dub special and uh, you know so we, we had to make it current you know and um, hence sticks man came forth and job bless you and you know sticks man became a big hit you know big uh, hit you know in in the uk and worldwide you know Yes, I mean that tune was was absolutely enormous. I'm going to play that tune. We're just going to talk about the history of Black Slate. Uh, I feel like dissecting the whole history and and finding out who you guys were from day one up until now. So I'm going to play the tune right now. This is Sticksman, okay? This is Black Slate. <laughs> Okay, I had my ear tunes back to front. Gremlins. Listen to Sticks, man. I know Michelle Alfredton will remember this and Mama D and all the massive. on this particular track? It, well, I, it's I, man, you know, every time I sing it. I wait, I say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, talk to me, man. You say you're taking away the tax that you take from us. You also take it from your blood. If you're deep and white, you will take it from black. Gonna welcome forward Daddy Lion Chandel in the building. He's our professor. Why you do that? Rubber man. Why you do that? Hustle. Hustle in the right way. I beg you, my brethren. So yeah. Hustle. Hustle in the right way. I beg you, my brethren. my brethren uh, black prophecy they're gonna be coming up uh, right after myself 8 p.m till midnight you get locked right after myself and this track 
track is taking us back to what year? 77. 1977. I was blazing this tune in school days. Wow, 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 wow. And remember the old uh, cassette tape, the, the front loader. <laughs> yeah. we, we used to put like uh, the, the little cassette tape. I even forget what they call it now. But we used to put it right next to the speaker. We used to record the music and then take that to, to school on a cassette, you know, and, and blaze it at school. That's just before the Ghetto Blaster came in, you know. Okay, okay. <laughs> that state. Just, just take me back to the early beginnings of, of how, you know, before you became Black Slate, how it kind of came together. What were you doing before Black Slate? Okay. Um, well, um, I was working you know, um, with my father's band and we were called Apollo 7 and I was around 12 years of age when I was working with my father's band and I was working you know, I worked with my dad's band for about 3-4 years and then I was around 17 and um, Mr. Brightley, who is Anthony Brightley's father, spoke to my father and asked my dad if I would join um, the Young Ones from Zion. That was the name of the band when, when I came into, to, before we were in Black Slate. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, being with youngsters my age because my father band was mainly elders and things so you know I was happy to join a band that um, was my age you know and then we metamorphosized no we, we graduate we, 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 we change we decided to change our name and call ourselves Black Slate and that was Keith Drummond, Claydon Rogers there's my Mawani, Chris Hansen, um, Russell Rye, and there's my Mawani. Now, now yeah. the, 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 the very first group, that our uh, band that you set up, um, those same band members uh, migrated over to Black Slate, natural migration to Black Slate, right? Yeah. Um, we, we, you know, we, we wanted to have a more effective name at the time, you know. So Black Slate was a form of education. We we see that as a symbol and being black. We could have named Yellow Slate and Blue Slate and all them things. But in those days... But, but why Slate? Yes, Slate because it was the first form of instrument used to educate people. And, you know, in the first form of education, it was slight. You use a chalk and you write. And you, you, you absorb your information and write it on a slate. And so we saw that as form of education, you know. So, um, to the emperor, teach us that education is essential. That so that was the, f the factor, you know, mm. and and the foundation for um, our movement, you know, Black Seat back in the 70s and, in, 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 you know, early 80s. And myself and Keith Drummond, um, you know, we used to write most of the songs with that in vain, with that ethos, you know, of... Um, edifying our, our the reggae audience and introducing reggae to a new audience, you know, um, and keeping the fire burning, you know. Let me just ask you, when did Black Slate, what year did Black Slate become Black Slate? I would say around 1976. And at that time, were you guys into the Rastafarian faith or... Um, yeah, well, um, I was very much into the Rastafari and Fiat, um, as was Desmond and Keith, and most, that was 
mainly our foundation, but we used to be a backing band, mainly. And all the Jamaican artists that came over from Jamaica, Black Slate would be the backing band for them, Johnny Clark, Leroy Smart, John Walt, Ken Boot, Delroy Wilson, you know, um, Winston Curtis, Honey Boy, you know, and mainly, the, and mainly Bonnie Lee artists that used to come over. We used to back most of them, you know, so it was a great time. And, and that was the, the cutting, that's how we learned the foundation of reggae, in reggae music, you know, playing the authentic reggae songs them with the actual artists, you know, and it was a great joy for me to, to be working with these great artists who, when, you know, I was in the dance hall with my brethren and sister and them dancing to their records, and now I had the opportunity to actually work with them. So that was our first stage before we, you know, before we started to write songs for ourselves. Mm. And we, we realized that we have to really try to find our own identification. <laughs>